there you are now welcome back to the channel we are El Fresco today we're going to work on the Land Rover Series 3 so this is the first in a few videos that we're going to bring you on the channel of us uh, making worthy uh, roadworthy our Land Rover Series 3 there's a few bits and pieces that need to be done the Land Rover will be an ongoing project over the next oh probably the rest of my life but um over the next couple of weeks while we get the Land Rover roadworthy. Basically, I want to be able to use it for towing the race cars. I want to be able to use it for bringing the dogs up to the park and uh, running to the shops, etc. over uh, the summertime. But uh, we're into May now and it's one of those situations where we bought the Land Rover and we've had a good look over it and we've found some problems that very definitely need to get sorted ASAP. The very first problem and the one we're going to tackle today or we're going to make a start at tackling it anyway, is the hubs. Now, Land Rover is synonymous with this swivel hub setup. Uh, it's something that has been on Land Rovers since the Series 1 and made it all the way through the Defender Series as well. This, obviously, being a Series 3, has um, leaf springs on the front, so it's the earlier style. The problem with this swivel hub at the moment is that it has significant play in it. Okay, so you can see this movement in here. Obviously, this movement is a big, big problem because it's hugely affecting the steering and how the steering of the Land Rover is at the moment. It's adding play to an already, uh, well, what's the word, um, not brilliant system. In order to get this repaired, what I think has gone wrong is there is a thing in the top of this called a Ralco bushing. And that Ralco bushing has a pin that goes down through it and it uh, stabilizes the top half. At the bottom of the swivel hub, there is a taper roller bearing and the clearances are set by shims underneath these four bolts. I've ordered a full new swivel hub for this and I've also ordered all of the components to rebuild the brake system. My plan is today is to strip this back as far as the swivel hub, find out what's gone wrong and make ready for when the parts arrive. Unfortunately, we were hoping that the parts would be here for what is now the bank holiday long weekend here in Ireland. But unfortunately, due to several mess ups between the parts supplier and the shipping companies uh, trying to deal with shipping from the UK into Europe uh, and dealing with customs, it's been a royal nightmare. To give you an idea, I ordered the parts for this on the 16th. We're now, uh, the 16th of April that is. We're now heading into the first week in May and I still yet haven't seen my parts, which is just really, really disappointing. Okay, I know there's delays with COVID and all that sort of stuff, but these were seemingly parts that were in stock on the shelf. Anyway, that's my rant about parts over. Let's get into taking this apart. So the very first thing we need to do is to get the drum off and then we'll have a look at disconnecting the brakes and we'll look then at getting out the um, stub axle, well, uh, the half shaft, get the half shaft out and uh, get the rest of the front of this broke down. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna let out these brake adjusters now and uh, then I'll be able to hopefully get this drum to come loose. Now there is a bolt we can screw in here, which will pull the drum off if it doesn't come. Uh, but we'll just try giving it a couple of taps of the hammer first just to see if it'll come. I want to just show you this cool little vintage toolbox I have. Uh, this was donated to the channel by one of our subscribers. Uh, in the, uh, you'll see him commenting from time to time, Thomas. Um, this is a little toolbox that he had in his uh, garage for many, many years and thought maybe I might uh, like it. And I've been starting to build up a little selection of Land Rover tools in this toolbox. These uh, machines were designed to be worked on with real simple tools, just uh, simple uh, imperial spanners, a screwdriver, a couple of hammers, uh, vice grips, bits and bobs like that. And this little toolbox is perfect. So this will come around with the Land Rover everywhere and hopefully allow us to be able to do all the little bits of repairs that need to be done. Uh, and it'll be just one of those little things. So sometimes these drums need a little bit of persuasion. 
these ones are happy to come off. We're going to uh, bring these in to the Colchester uh, over the next couple of days and uh, stick them up in the Colchester and skim these drums while we're waiting for parts to come. Um, we'll see if we can get you some video footage of that. We might well be able to. So. Now we have all new brake shoes to come, so I'm not really worried about the condition, but there's still a good bit of meat left on these brake shoes. Uh, spider's home is getting disturbed here. Land Rover maybe was sitting up for a little while. <laughs> so anyway, now these brake shoes uh, have immense springs behind them. These huge big springs, and um, you might be able to see them in through here. And they are incredibly strong. Those springs pull with a lot of force. So the best way to get them out is to uh, lever the pad out of the caliper this way. So you want to bring it back out of the caliper this way and get it around. Just be really careful not to trap the fingers inside there. If you trap your fingers in there, that spring is gonna pull on them with a mighty amount of force and could make you, uh, well, it could be for not a very pleasant day. The bottom half is going to be the same. Once we get these uh, brake pads or these brake shoes out, uh, we can then start looking at getting um, the uh, wheel cylinders out. So, um, I cut my teeth on Land Rover uh, when I was an apprentice uh, back in uh, the, well, I think it was the noughties, the early noughties. So I'm reasonably familiar with them. I haven't worked on a Land Rover in probably, oh, it's definitely 15, maybe, might even be 20 years. It's definitely 15 years anyway. So it's something that I'm finding my feet with again. But one of the beauties with Land Rovers is they're really straightforward and simple machines. Um, you know, it, it's stuff that, as I said, can be worked on with simple tools. Okay, we'll get the rest of these brakes stripped down and then we'll see what the next thing is. I think it's going to be to take off this forward hub. Okay, so I think underneath here is the outer hub nut under this grease cap. These seemingly are notoriously hard to get off, but that seemed to be pretty easy. Probably just jinxed everything else on this job, but anyway. So, just clean off this grease to see what we're dealing with. So, we have a split pin to come out here, which should just be a case of, is there one that side? I think it's just there. So, let's get our screwdriver in. Flip pin. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, get the split pin out and then we'll be able to Now, oh, it's beautiful to be working out in the sunshine on it. A lovely, uh, I suppose it's nearly summer now, is it? Yeah, near summer. So this guy shouldn't be very tight. Um, there is a tool for this, I think. Um, but I'm told these are not tight. <laughs> Don't know who told me, but. They are only supposed to be a locking nut. There is a lot of rust here though, so. Mm. Don't worry, I've ordered a new one of these, so I'm not worried about hitting this one with the hammer. Not getting any much movement on that. Okay, leave it with me for a minute and I'll see what I can do. 
Okay, so just before, <laughs> just as we switched off the camera, I swear, I swear to you, uh, I hit that one more bang with the punch and it loosened and I said, really? It's like just when you turn off the camera, it always works, doesn't it? But anyway, it did just take another good hard shock with the, um, the punch. No doubt I was probably going easy, you know, because I'm on camera. Okay, so I just decided to take out these bolts here before I took that hub nut off because uh, if I remember correct, the second nut that holds the whole wheel bearing assembly together is behind this cap. Uh, but as I said, it's at least 15 years ago, so bear with me. I'm finding my way. And you're coming along for the journey. Okay. So, that guy out of there. And then put him around there. And then this here should be the driving flange. Yep, it is. The ubiquitous flat blade screwdriver. here and then this should do that now I think that's actually a kind of a seal if I remember correct it's either a seal or oh yeah it's a sort of a, a spacing ring a seal ring. that's why you don't tighten those up that tight like those nuts don't have to be very tight because they actually just go and sit against that little metal clip in there and that metal clip is not there's not much of anything in there to hold it so that nut doesn't have to be very tight it literally just retains the drive shaft out here so that is the half shaft in there you can see it moving we won't be able to get that half shaft out until we get all the way back as far as the swivel hub so basically that whole arrangement we just took off is what holds the half shaft on this end allows the half shaft to be there so now what we have here is the wheel bearing so this is the wheel bearing that this is sitting on. And you can actually see the wheel bearing is in really good shape here. There's no problem with the wheel bearing. People might have thought that the play I was seeing was wheel bearing play, but it's not wheel bearing play at all because this is our wheel bearing. And you can see there's little to no play. There has to be a little bit. That's, uh, you know, that's how Land Rover have it built. So there is very little play there. So how this wheel bearing uh, is uh, assembled, it's pretty straightforward. You've got a nut on the outside. You've got this big box nut on the outside, then a lock tab, and then another box nut on the inside. Now, Land Rover sell a sort of, well, not Land Rover, but any of the spares crowds sell a sort of horrible looking box spanner to take these off with. Um, but I'm gonna go and route through my vast selection of sockets and I imagine I probably have a socket the right size for this if I don't then I'm going to try uh, something like a uh, punch on the flats because as far as I know these aren't really very tight they're just locking nuts and I want to oh be Jamie I want, where possible, to try and do all the work on this Land Rover with basic tools because that is what they were designed to be worked on with. Okay, that's that lock tab. Knocked down. I'll go see what size sockets I have. I think I might have that size socket. If I don't, I'll use a punch. So. We went rooting through my sockets and I found the right size socket, but it's not a deep one. Fortunately, it's a shallow socket, so it won't fit down because of the half shaft. What a pity. Oh <laughs> well. So I did have it. I even brought out one of my bigger spanners to see it was one of them, but not even close. So I think water pump pliers is what we're going to have to try, but I'm told they are never that tight, so I think this will work. Oh, yeah great yeah so as I said this is a learning experience for me too and I want to find out what works and the great thing is I know that if I have this water pump pliers in my 
vintage toolbox that I will have something that I can work on my wheel bearings with. So it's a nice little learning experience. We're figuring stuff out as we go. Okay, so that's that lock washer. And its job basically is it's peened over both sides. It's peened over one side and catches the inner nut and then gets peened over on the outside and catches the other one. It has this locking groove here in the middle, which uh, there's a groove in the stub shaft as well for that to go into. When this is all pulled off, I'll try and show you a better look at that. So basically now what we have is we have uh, axle oil starting to come out here, which tells me exactly what I thought. We have a seal gone here. The half shaft seal is gone. Luckily, I've ordered a half shaft seal. The problem is, is that that bearing now is not sitting in grease like it should be, it's in oil. And if we left this go for a long period of time, it would eventually damage that bearing because those bearings are designed for grease, not oil. They need that um, higher uh, pressure ability of oil. So we'll wind this guy out. That's that second locking nut. And this is the beauty of Land Rovers, guys. You know, people say, why do you want the Series 3? This is it. They are beautifully simple machines to work on with clever engineering. Never mistake simple engineering with lack of thought. Oftentimes, to make something that you can work on easily actually takes much more engineering brilliance than something that is easy to make. It's simple to make something uh, one way but to make it so it can be easily worked on is a completely different thing so there's another lock washer here and that lock washer again it has that key in it has that sort of groove in it and the idea of that is is that when you're trying to tighten up that um, nut to preload that wheel bearing you want to be able to have a fixed surface to go against if you were tightening up against that wheel bearing surface that wheel bearing would try and turn on you and you would lose your ability to get an accurate figure on it. Okay, so bearing race now. We're gonna be protective of this bearing race because more than likely we're going to reuse it. Although there is some pitting starting to come up on the rollers. So we may well put a call in to our friendly wheel bearing supplier, to our friendly bearing supplier, uh, Efox Engineering, and ask them, do they have these in stock? They might well have. Craig, if you're watching, you'll get a call during the week. Okay. So now, we can now take off this um, stub shaft and there is our other bearing in the back. Okay, so there's our two taper roller. One on the inside and one on the outside. And this is the seal that is giving trouble here. Well, actually, it's probably not the seal that's giving trouble. The seal that's giving trouble is the half shaft seal, the seal that this sits in. Because what's happening is oil is coming out along the half shaft and returning back into the bearing which we can see here. You can see all this kind of rusty uh, junk sitting on the outside. That is more likely, more than likely where it's going. Okay, so next on the list is to get this brake back plate off, which is these bolts here. I'm gonna give this a bit of a clean up and then we'll take those bolts out and then that should start to get us towards the swivel hub. So I've released this ring of bolts. I just have one left here holding this on. I've also taken off the brake pipe. I've already drained down the system. There's a little drop every now and then coming from the hose or the pipe, should I say. We're going to change these rubber hoses for braided hoses. Uh, we have the ability here, obviously, in the workshop to make our own braided hoses. So I think that's what we're going to do. And um, we might do a little video on that in the very near future. Uh, because obviously this being a vehicle that goes off-road and we are definitely going to take this vehicle off-road braided brake hoses just make a bit more sense because it will just give the the brake system that bit more protection it'll also give it a better brake pedal and you know poor Land Rovers need every help they can get when it comes to better braking so that is the brake brake plate off next thing then is I believe this um, hub here is held on by those same bolts so um, we'll just have a little look here and see scrape away some of the crud of which there is plenty uh, so I believe this sort of outer stub 
is just held on by this ring of bolts. So I think um, we should be able to just unbolt it. So I'm just gonna bring in a drain tray here in case uh, this results in there being some oil coming out of here. And yes, that is releasing. So I think there's just a gasket in behind this is all there is. So, all right, well, there's no oil in there, which is never a great sign. And uh, yeah, I think the gasket has seen better days, but when we buy our new kit, it'll come with a gasket. Or when our new kit arrives, it'll come with a gasket. Now I'm led to believe this half shaft just comes out through here which it um, looks like it does. Interesting witness mark of wear there. There's a little witness mark. I wonder what that was touching off of. That may well be something to do with the fact that this was moving up and down in a way it shouldn't. Uh, quite possibly rubbing off maybe the top here, or, or sorry, the top here or the bottom here. Okay, we're getting in there now. I'm just going to put this half shaft away somewhere safe and then we can continue deeper. So this is the pin that holds the Ralco bushing in on the top of the swivel hub. Now I'm going to take these bolts out but I'm not going to take out that pin just yet because I want to release the end of this track rod and I also want to release, there is a seal that runs around the back of this, um, which has some bolts on it. And I have a feeling they are going to be very much seized in there. So I want to get a wire brush and rub them. You can just see the heads of them sticking out here. So I want to get a wire brush and rub them with the wire brush and spray them with some penetrating oil uh, to give ourselves every possible chance of them releasing and then we can have a go at getting it to release. Well, we can take this out and then this should lift up and it'll allow this whole hub drop off and then the swivel inner will be left behind and we'll be left with this outer. And then we should be able to ascertain why we have all this play that we can see here. Now, it is possible to shim these Ralco bushings. There's a couple of shims underneath this hat here and you can shim it but I know for a fact there is not enough shims in the world <laughs> that would reduce the play that's in this Ralco bushing because it's obviously worn out. So we'll take out this uh, swivel pin and there's those shims that I was telling you about. So they're the shims that you would use to set the um, swivel uh, clearances, I suppose you'd say. So we can see massive wear on this swivel pin. You see the big step in it here. So we're gonna have re-engineering work to do here. We'll more than likely have to weld it up and, and turn it in the lathe in the four jaw chuck to bring it back to size because there's problems there. Okay, I've taken off that ball joint off camera. It's literally just the case of, I, I have ordered new uh, track control arms and new drag links so I just cut the nut off with the grinder and broke loose the taper it's we're never going to be using the track rod end again anyway so so how these swivel hubs work is you just turn them out and then drop out at the bottom of the taper roller bearing oh and look at that so I'm so glad I ordered new swivel hubs because that that taper roller bearing is completely shot you can see all the pitting all of this junk down here oh, it's all just rust and crud from where this has been lying for a long period of time. Now that reveals this Ralco bushing that we were talking about. And again, you can just see all the crud and muck and junk on that Ralco bush. And if I get that pin back, we'll see, look, that's that should be a tight fit in that Ralco bush. And you can see the pin is flopping around there. So I'm so glad I ordered up a new one of these swivel hubs. Uh, for this because it's definitely what's needed. So the very last thing we have to take off now is this swivel hub. Let's get this swivel hub off and then we can wrap up the end of the axle with a plastic bag and wait for the parts to come and then we'll be able to put her back together. So to get off this swivel hub uh, we have a couple of bolts here at the back we have to get at. You can see this is the retaining ring for the swivel seal. 
it's in a terrible way. So we have a couple of bolts here, a little ring of bolts around here at the back, which we need to open off. And once we have them opened off, this swivel hub will come off. I'll, uh, I'll save you the pain of watching me open each one of these bolts. I'll whip these bolts off and then I'll pop the swivel hub off and I'll show you what's inside. Okay, we had an absolute nightmare getting this ring of bolts out. They're all rusted and rotten in. They were shearing, they're breaking off. We had to cut some of them with the grinder. But the only good thing is, is that this swivel hub is now finished and done. So it's a serviceable item. It's changeable. In the swivel hub is a bearing, a roller bearing, which we're going to have to replace. That's the uh, half shaft roller bearing. So that's going to have to get changed. And an oil seal there that the half shaft goes through, that'll have to be changed as well. All of that is coming in the kit from the supplier for to rebuild this, uh, the end of this axle. So we'll just get a plastic bag wrapped around that. And we'll have to wait now for parts to come from the supplier and then we can build back up the front of this uh, driver's side front wheel swivel. Okay, so we've finished up now. We have the bag wrapped around the end of that and we're waiting for parts to come. I hope you enjoyed following me along uh, as this is kind of a bit more of a vloggy style video following me actually physically completely taking this apart for the first time. As I said, I cut my teeth on Land Rovers back in the day, but it's almost 20 years ago now and I'm remembering as I go and trying to learn as I go, but uh, I'm bringing you with me just to show you uh, a different side of how I work as a mechanic and how I try and take things apart and how I work on it hopefully the parts will arrive over the next few weeks there's loads of other jobs to do in the Land Rover in the meantime anyway so we can be making starts that the boat driver and passenger door uh, sliding glasses need to be rebuilt somebody has put in teak sliders in it which you know fantastic and all that but absolutely useless to keeping the rain or the wind out so uh, they need to be rebuilt uh, the injectors need to be rebuilt as well uh, it's very down on power and blowing a lot of smoke so um, I think an injector rebuild is definitely going to be important as is probably a partial rebuild of the CAV diesel pump so they're all still to come. As I said, I hope you enjoy it. If you're new to the channel, you're very welcome. We normally work on minis here. It's a classic mini channel, uh, but this is my Land Rover and it is one that is becoming part of the garage and it's going to be the workhorse of the family. So uh, if you like what you see, have a look around some other mini videos. There'll be more Land Rover stuff coming as well over the next few weeks as we uh, get this series three ready to uh, perform and work again. For everybody who is a normal subscriber and following all of our videos, thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed something a little bit different this time. Comment in the comment section down below if you did and you enjoyed the videos or just I want to have a chat or want to ask me questions about anything that you've seen today. I'll be more than happy to try and answer it to the best of my abilities. Other than that, if you could hit the like button for me, I'd really appreciate it and I'll see you guys on the next one.